Hello, I recently did a video that I thought, uh, that I promised I'd elaborate a bit on um, a couple of uh, days ago. I um, shared a few thoughts on um, therapy, therapy in general, uh, how I um, managed to arrive at a stage of wanting to fully recover without um, without the aid of a therapist um, or rather I, I described how especially in the last uh, therapy sessions that I was having I felt so so misunderstood that I thought it all doesn't make sense I have to do something else I I didn't um, I didn't think it would use it would sorry it would be of any use to me to continue that way. If you've seen some of my videos already, you may know that I uh, like to talk about um, confidence and self-esteem in relation to languages. I grew up with five. Um, sorry for always to those that are listening that I always mention a number, but I, I, I'm pointing out um, some of the difficulties that uh, come with the many great side effects of speaking a lot of languages. Um, sure, um, being able to do small talk all over a continent, in my case these uh, languages are all uh, European, that's a, that's a great thing. You gain access to local communities uh, in, in very different areas, um, you're able, and that's one of the best things about speaking different languages, you get to um, if you arrive as a foreigner, as a stranger, and you demonstrate to the community that is uh, hosting you that you actually speak their language, then there's, I can't really think of it ever being different. There's always this incredible joy and surprise and a moment of uh, bewilderment and um, and perhaps very positive suspicion, but eventually a sense of feeling welcome because there's a kind of mirroring between yourself who has arrived as a stranger and the community that you've uh, that you're just uh, visiting or facing for i don't know if you're there for a couple of weeks uh, depending on the cause of your visit um that you create a, a sort of very natural bond um simply based on language, even if it's a language uh, that you yourself don't speak with the local accent, it's still an immediate connection and that's incredibly wonderful. Um, and I always found that my knowledge of languages that I, if I now think back to, um, throughout my life has, has been most accepted and I, as a consequence, as a person was most, um, taken serious and uh, listened to when I was facing locals that didn't expect that I spoke their language. And that um, in part explains why I would become so distressed when I was in environments where there was simply the assumption that I spoke a language perfectly because I don't speak any of my five languages perfectly uh, never at the level of uh, of a native speaker I dilute all of them because of the um, brain space that I have given to the others so I I struggle with that a bit sometimes more sometimes less depending on what uh, state I'm in um, it's never that uh, simple and I thought that's that's something I'd like to elaborate on because in terms of therapy um, that is so that can be so language based um, I was incredibly distressed I, I I never understood myself why certain topics related to language or why and how misunderstanding and the resulting frustrations that I was facing within uh, social but also familial contexts contexts uh, would upset me so much and I never found a therapist that gave me answers to that so when I talk about root causes in eating disorders 
um, I find myself like I think many sufferers of an eating disorder will be able to um, to confirm I find myself thinking of low self-esteem low self-worth uh, self-loathing and thinking that I'm not good enough um, and in my case that is and was often founded on my assumption um, that no matter how I said things uh, it wasn't good enough they they weren't the right way of putting it and I tended to feel threatened by a society that was full of native speakers or uh, locals that assumed I spoke their language, assumed I had the same background as they did and as a consequence I always felt like at some point somebody would say well but what are you anyways because you're definitely not part of this um, and it's a terrible thing to hear even I mean at any time in life but when you're a young person you just you're figuring out who you are as it is and imagine going from one group of people to another group of people and on a regular basis being told well what are you anyways because what are you even saying I don't know what you're saying you sound strange um, that even to a native speaker can sound terribly daunting and have serious effects on the way one perceives oneself and imagine that on, on that kind of behavior on somebody who's already by nature like I am and many other people who suffer from eating disorders a perfectionist and and kind of makes life hell for themselves as it is even if it's not an eating disorder there's I think kinds of characters that um, by default uh, are harsher on themselves and I certainly am I still am I have high expectations of myself I used to always have that so the the last thing or my biggest fear is although I tend to often pretend that it's not even that bad, is, uh, is being uh, criticized. Um, constructive criticism is great if somebody is willing to give me a bit of time and the necessary space to explain a couple of things and, and, cons and takes into account uh, my, the linguistic hodgepodge that I carry around in my head then I won't feel threatened. But more often than not, that is not the case, right? That's why often people say, that's why you go to therapy. That's where you can discuss your issues in a safe space. Well, it's what I tried and I felt that, especially in my last therapy sessions, it didn't really make a difference. <laughs> I, I felt that some of the things that I was being told were even worse than what I would sometimes encounter in uh, real life. So the undermining of my self-confidence um, by being told that what I was saying didn't make any sense or uh, the way I tell things um, can't be um, followed naturally. It's all very confusing. All of that certainly wasn't helpful to me developing a, a, a sense of understanding of myself. And I'm, I'm very happy that at the point that I was facing these therapy sessions, they took around half a year, I was already committed to recovery and I was with that came a bit of arrogance, a bit of understanding that sometimes nobody has answers for me. Uh, sometimes and maybe always, I don't know, maybe always I will know best what is good for me. Um, I never thought that. I always was more the kind of person that or maybe that's not true either, but I think there was moments on and off in my life where I saw myself rather as a victim and I thought somebody had to save me. But I think luckily that's only a very minor part of me. I am more somebody who wants to get things done my way. And if you're that kind of person, you're quickly accused of being arrogant, which is what I hear over and over again. But I think that that trait that insistence on knowing what is good for myself um, helped me s solidify or, or rather consolidate um, self-appreciation and my self-confidence because it was based on what I myself felt rather than 
what I started to feel because somebody else gave me a series of reasons for that, right? And thinking of a therapist who doesn't know my life um, and whom I paid a lot of money for, that was another very distressing thing. Um, the amount of money that I was regularly giving to someone, although having a job that uh, pays by the hour, uh, that barely covers uh, rent, I still live with my parents, and this is something that a therapist knows, right? And the fact that we just really didn't seem to make any progress together. Um, I'm sure that person works for other people, but we, within half a year, seem to make no progress. Or rather, the progress that I knew I was making um, wasn't even recognized. Um, that's when I really decided to abandon that therapy because, and that was one of the most hurtful things, that um, rather than f seeming to want to understand where my eating disorder came from, that therapist sometimes used language that made it sound like it was all my fault. And I will quote, perhaps this is something that you've also heard in therapy. She said, well, I know people like you are very difficult and it's very, very serious if you're an anorexic you don't want anyone to tell you anything. That's all true, right? I mean, it is all true. If you are an anorexic and you have the willpower to lose weight, then you won't listen to anyone. You'll block out everything. But, um, but she was saying it to somebody who was already recovering and even in terms of, even physically. So she could see that weight wise i was doing much better but she didn't she actually said she sees absolutely no progress and 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 the worst thing for me i think was i think that all happened in 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 one session she one or two times said she doesn't believe that and i thought excuse me i i i would recount something from you know childhood and um being exposed to <laughs> uh child rearing methods that i you know for me were harmful and she said she didn't believe that um and i was like excuse me but i didn't i didn't invent that i mean that's something that was done and said to me and i was quoting people um that would say hurtful things to me and i remembered that very well uh she just said she doesn't believe that and then i thought well you know, on that ground, I don't think we can really work together. So coming back to the topic of trust, if you work with someone um, even outside the therapy room and they don't believe you, um, there's very, it's very difficult to restore any or to build any kind of trust, right? And I think that's something to bear in mind when you go to therapy. Uh, a therapist should be neutral and should not have prejudice towards you. Even if you arrive as an anorexic, there's, I understand that, sort of classic patterns to anorexia, but there's so much more there as well. And especially given the fact that I outlined the sort of fundamental insecurities that I had based on language, based on uh, growing up all over the place based on constantly assimilating in order not to mm, cause confusion amongst others. So kind of always putting myself last in order to not distress society. I made that clear outright. All of that didn't serve. Um, and and uh, recently I, I picked up a book that a friend gave to me, which was Alice's, uh, Alice Miller's uh, the drama of the gifted child and I thought that was it, it's such a great read and Alice Miller in general who, who was a child psychologist um, sadly passed away a couple of years ago really revolutionized a way of thinking about therapy that favored the child that favored the young person and not so much the parent or the teacher or the adult authorities that surrounded the child and reading a couple of even a couple of phrases uh, or even a sort of a summary of how she worked and what it is that was important to her um, helped me understand that there was very much a reason for my distress 
over that last kind of therapy that I was going through. Um, I hope this video makes sense uh, to you if you've tried therapy and found yourself at, you know, uh, hitting, hitting a wall with your therapist um, because it means that sometimes, sometimes it really is best that you try and help yourself and that doesn't mean that I am sending you off into an unknown black hole where you have to tap in the dark in order to make progress. That's exactly what I'm not saying because I encourage you to look out for the many wonderful things that are out online. I'll leave a couple of them uh, in the description box below here, a couple of links that I think spark thought processes that um, can be useful to somebody strictly suffering from eating disorders, but anyone really, because low self-esteem and um, clashes between the individual and their immediate surrounding can affect everybody. So I hope that will be of use to you and uh, get you get you thinking about things, mm, maybe in a way that uh, until now you, you haven't been able to. I look forward to recording other videos and if you have questions about this one, um, please, uh, please feel free to, to, um, comment at the, at the bottom. Sorry, this was a sloppy ending. Anyways, hope you're well and uh, speak to you soon. Bye.